Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiaboo and I am here for more Retro Monday Overdrive. This time for something completely different, sort of, kind of, not really, let's talk about it. So, uh, for the last number of weeks of overdriving, I've had it kind of easy and difficult. Easy because I get to wake up and just know what I'm going to be watching next. Either I'm watching the next of the Pot Labor OVAs, or there's a movie to watch, or we're good to go, right? But, uh, hard because movies, they're long and big and difficult and stuff. And also, the movies that we've been watching have been so chock full of content that it's just impossible to, to like, get it all in my head and then talk about it. It's, it's super difficult for me. But, super rewarding, super fun, utterly worth it, no complaints on my end. But, we finished Polybor. Sort of. I mean, we didn't watch the TV series, but I'm not really interested in watching a 24-episode TV series, so we finished Polybor. For now. What do next? I don't know. Back to, back to, I have no idea what to watch on Retro Monday Overdrive because there are so many choices. So I decided to stick with what would be kind of easy and stick with an Oshii show. Um, so when I woke up this morning, I went on Mal just on my phone while I was lazing around in bed and uh, just browsed through all of the things that he's ever been a, a part of and decided on something that would catch my interest. Um, some people have been saying, you know, like, Angel's Egg exists, hey, look at this, this is a thing that you could watch, and I'm completely aware, however, I do not feel like diving into Angel's Egg. I am, honestly, let me be real with you, I am scared of Angel's Egg, because it's one of those things that's like, oh, shit, you're, you're gonna watch a masterpiece, and now you have to deal with the fact that you've watched a masterpiece and give it justice. So, Angel's Egg will wait for a day where I feel like I'm, I'm in for in for a long ride and able to give something justice when it deserves it and or willing to just sit here and be like have my mind destroyed for a couple hours and be unable to talk about it that's not today 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 we're gonna do something completely different and uh we're gonna stick on the Oshi train but with something very 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 different from the other things that we've been watching and that will be gosenzo sama ban banzai Weird name for a weird show with weird art that nobody really talks about. So what the hell is this show and why are we watching it? Well, in searching up Gosenzo Sama Ban Banzai, uh, I stumbled across an article and I looked specifically for this article because someone in my Discord mentioned that such an article might exist. Um, GK talked about this a little while ago. Uh, GK is one of the people on my Discord who is now a mod um, who watches a lot of retro stuff and has been has been a, an avid supporter, let's say, of Legend of the Galactic Heroes when we were doing that and moving forward into Retro Monday Overdrive as we've been doing that. But GK, on a whim, after I started Potlebor, decided to go and watch Kosenzo Sama Ban Banzai on his own. And in doing so, ended up finding some, some interesting articles, one of which talked about how important and influential Kosenzo Sama Ban Banzai is from an animation standpoint on animators, to the point where there was actually a term called Kosenzo Sama Shock as referencing like the ripple effect that this show's production had on the anime industry because when animators saw this when people in production saw this show the way that anime was done in japan changed fundamentally and i never knew about that until this morning when i looked it up and now that i've looked it up and found out about it i am fascinated by it and i'm fascinated as before, and if you've been watching Overdrive for any length of time, you know that part of what we're doing here is finding the puzzle pieces that give us a foundational understanding of the history of anime and where a lot of the techniques and stylistic choices that have become the norm came from. And it seems like Gosenza Sama Ban Banzai is one of the sources for a lot of those things. And that, to me, is fucking fascinating. So what is it about Gosenzo Sama Ban Banzai that's so different and weird and special? Well, let's talk about it a little bit before we dive in so that we've got some foundations and know what we're looking for. The first thing that we're probably going to notice, and it's the first thing you'll notice if you look up Gosenzo Sama Ban Banzai, is that it looks like it was animated by 12-year-olds. It looks like kid drawings. Um, the anatomy is simple basic shapes, and the characters are sort of warped and weird, and there's not much care paid to sticking to any sort of 
strict character design or anything like that. They're simply shaped and really distinct from each other. But what that obviously means is lower line count in animation, and lower line count means an easier time animating and an easier time drawing more keyframes. And that's crucial to the animation techniques that are going to be on display in Gosenzo Sama Bon Banzai. What they decided to do, and this was partly a decision by, by people like Oshi, and partly a decision by the animation director, uh, something or other, uh, Utsuno Miya, um, who would go on to animation direct on a shitload of things and do a lot of work on a whole bunch of shows, especially a bunch of Madhouse shows that are pretty well regarded. Um, but the, the core is a focus on fluidity, and the way that we define fluidity is the important part. More keyframes, less in-betweens. What they discovered was that when you have a normal keyframe animation, but you up the number of in-betweens, you get what we experience when people do computer-generated uh, 60 FPS videos or whatever. It looks really smooth, but it's weird. It's not real. Because there are all these these more in-betweens there, it's smooth in between all of those, those keyframes, but it's not the right animation. And every time it hits a keyframe along the moment, you can tell. So one of the examples that's talked about is Akira, uh, a foundational anime, um, fantastically animated with tons of in-betweens and very smooth animation, but also odd and kind of jerky animation at times because of the reliance on keyframes and the reliance of the in-betweens between them. So what is the solution? Well, we reduce the quality, we reduce the detail required for each keyframe, we increase the number of keyframes and decrease the number of in-betweens. Okay, so more genuinely drawn, thought out keyframes. What that means is our frame count actually ends up being less important than the intent behind each frame. Our animators have to think about what the action actually is, how it will actually hit these beats along all those different frames. And because they're dealing with simplified character designs, they can actually draw that out. Beyond that, they can also make stronger use of techniques like warping and squashing and stretching and smearing and stuff like that that I happen to love in animation because it's an additional level of fluidity that you can imbue your drawings with. They're core concepts in animating things and making them look fluid and motiony. But the style at the time was focused on highly detailed drawings, which would end up with lots of still frames, with lots of lip flaps, and not much more. So the swap is more keyframes, less in-betweens, less detail on those keyframes, more focus on fluidity and animation. And what we get is less realism in the art and far more realism in the animation. And that's really fascinating. Now, I think that it's pretty clear from that kind of a, a description that we can all come up with one currently active director whose work is obviously influenced by this kind of a style. That man is named Masaaki Yuasa. He might be the most famous anime director currently alive, maybe barring, like, Miyazaki? It's hard to say, and Ano maybe, but Yuasa's up there, especially in a Western audience. Um, he's so well-known, and his style is so recognizable because, well, it has a lot of those same hallmarks, doesn't it? Sort of character designs that are basic shapes, characters that are really distinct but very simplistic, a focus on fluidity of animation and expression through animation as opposed to beauty in individual artistic frames, um, a, a realism in the movement of the characters that isn't echoed by their actual art. All of these things are part and parcel to Yuasa's style, and he's gone on in more recent years to explore even further uh, uh, things that can be done with that, like the digital tweening that was done throughout Ping Pong to create some of those crazy, fucked up faces, like you'll see on, I forget his name, but the, the Chinese competitor who will, you know, he'll hit a thing and it'll be like, ah, because they're doing all this crazy digital tweening to create interesting effects with in-between animation. Um, but that kind of iteration all stems from one source, and that source, oddly enough, is this weird-looking show called Gosensa Sama Bon Banzai. So, we're going to be looking out for lots of warping and squashing and stretching and, and a lack of detailed drawings but a focus on realistic animation. We're going to be keeping an eye out for any changes in frame counts that seem obvious to us. Um, we normally do this all the time in, in shows when uh, a sequence looks like it'll jump to 24 FPS. I'll often point it out. 
Um, we'll see if we notice anything like that or anything on the opposite side of things. If things look like they're animated in threes but are oddly smooth, that could be really cool. But we'll be paying attention to those things. We'll be paying attention to the way that the characters are drawn, the way things are framed generally, normal Oshii stuff, as well as um, significance of shadows and how they interact and give depth to the characters despite their relatively sim simplistic line work. Um, all of those things together should be really interesting. And then um, on a more like theoretical note that probably won't come into play, there are a shitload of key animators who worked on this show who went on to do amazing things, not least of which is Mitsuo Iso uh, and, and a number of other people who were all influenced by this whole idea of a different kind of animation that would eventually become something like Iso's full limited key animation where he would draw every fucking frame himself because he's a crazy man and also a genius. And thank God for Mitsuo Iso. But... All of this is to say that there's some really fascinating stuff going on in Gosenzo Sama Bon Bonsai. I don't know how much I'll be able to add to the discussion. I'm not entirely blind because I have read up on the context of this show. I don't know anything about the story of this show or what to expect from it. It's got six episodes. They're half an hour each. I don't know what the hell we're going to be dealing with here. I don't even know if I'm going to like it. I might hate it. It might be only useful as an experiment in, like seeing what it looks like and how it how it functions and we might hate the actual content totally valid but um i want to watch this thing i want to check it out i want to see if it fills that missing puzzle piece in our history of animation okay so in the interest of doing that i have gone and downloaded gosenzo sama bon bonsai i just uh went on ya and searched for gosenzo and it immediately popped up there was one uh one source with a bunch of seeds and i grabbed it i forget what it was called it's the only one with a bunch of seeds so you'll find it um it exists i have it it's up it's at zero seconds we're watching in japanese with english sub i don't even know if this was ever dubbed doesn't really matter. We wouldn't watch it even if it was. But I've got the episode up. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find a picture-in-picture -picture version of the video up there, linked in the description, and a timer-based version up on YouTube. If you would like to do a syncy thing and sync up your own copy of the episode with the timer-based version, you're welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count it down will be coming at you and now. Oh, it's a burb. Um, um, uh, uh, we're pausing at the next scene change immediately. <laughs> yeah. A nest thieves. Nope, gotta get rid of it. Yep, and then her child hatches and <laughs> takes up all the food. Yep. Bastard birds. So why is this the intro? What does this have to do contextually with? Mm-hmm. Oh, are we going to, is this going to be about an adoption? <laughs> the narrator is just chewing it, just eating it all up. What the fuck? <laughs> Kako. <laughs> Thanks, narrator. What what was the point of this story? Okay, apparently this was hand drawn. This was hand drawn. The static. 
and and all of the transitions. Apparently, these were all hand drawn. That's all I know. That was hand drawn. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. Nah. <laughs> nah. 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 Bullshit. I don't buy it. I do though. <laughs> Cause <laughs> there's no tech on display here. How? And there's our title drop. And what does that have to do with the cuckoo? Are we going to meet a, an adopted child who's living in somebody else's household? Or is there just no... Oh, hi, Blimp. That's familiar. <laughs> hmm. Hello, strange child. Lady with gigantic hat. Oh, shadows. <laughs> How expressive. Oh, there she is. Further, closer, closer. Oh, you lost her. Baka. Hmm. Or a yellow flower hat. What's that voice? I feel like I know that voice. I don't know. That's a deep. Or is it faux deep? Or is it joke deep? <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can see he's drawn mannequinly. Are they com okay? They're actually speaking. Why did it sound like it was like in their heads or something? There was like a weird reverb on that shit. Okay, hello, yellow flower girl. What are you? Uh, Messing around with the the bat just for fun. Hey, you gotta love summer. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. But you're stuck up here. Yeah. Why? Why aren't you out there? Uh huh. Hmm. When I stole your turn as usual. Understood what? We're just holding for this conversation. This is really weird. <laughs> All the important stuff.
Wait, wait, what is that? What is that? Is that the unsaid? <laughs> this is a very strange conversation. Okay. You spent it all? Oh, you bought some. Okay. And now you're trying to get more money out of him? Also, isn't the doorbell still ringing? Ah. So... But why? <laughs> the... The shattering glass for the newspaper? <laughs> what? Okay. This is the strangest thing that I've seen in a while. And I'm watching Review Starlight right now. Did you see? Okay, this, this shot keeps shifting. Ha what? Okay. <laughs> you bought a metal bat too? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Are they gonna fight? What? Because it's too good a club? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there she is. Oh my god, that was... Oh my god, that was a shot. Alright, interruption arrives. Open sesame. Uh-huh. I guess our duel will have to wait. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh huh. Hi. What? No, oh, you just murdered him. He's fine. <laughs> it wasn't my intent. <laughs> yeah. I just got smacked by a door. Some of the animation is like Popeye. Like like that little thing? That that's like Popeye level stuff. Super interesting. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going. I'm going. I promise. Except not me. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. You go do it. Oh, uh, and the NHK, gotta gotta tell them off. It's a pretty girl. And a yellow flower. Well, he thought he did. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
That does not look like the same girl. She looks a lot less murdery. Um. What are they afraid of? Right. Super evil. Uh, those people. What bridge? Bridge? Those people? Who are those people? Are, is she a vampire who can't get let in? Okay. Refuse to let them in. Yeah, stay the fuck away. She's really cute. She's really cute. <laughs> ah shit Ah shit she just warned you dude This was exactly what you were told about Fuck Goldenrod again Don't do it Don't do it Alright shadows there Mm hmm <laughs> The full punch perm. I don't think Yakuza usually sell magazines. It's not normally their deal. <laughs> oh, all the horrors. That actually sounds like it might be right on the money. All right, why are we having a an onstage like dim the light spotlight on monologue right now? Because that's what's happening. It, we're we're in full theatrical presentation of a monologue inside a character's head. What the fuck? I mean, the whole opening sequence with them in the room was like a stage play opening. And and the voices from off stage. Oh my god, the shadows. It all comes back to the pullover. But you spent your money on a... Oh, fucking hell. The presentation is amazing. All right, you're just telling us the whole story that we've heard now before, but doing it in a completely different. What the fuck? How how could he? What a what a tragedy. And the door will open. Um, okay, it's cute girl in a yellow hat. I'm sorry, what? Nani? What? Huh? Yeah. Oh my god, the subversion of the Dazaki frame? Oh, no fucking way, he's... 
He's got sentience within the Dazaki frame? Okay. Okay, we're back. Oh, it's a Kodak blimp. Hi, Mom. Oh, Mom seems angry. Oh, hello, child. <laughs> Wait. Did we just wait for a cue? Oh, she's... Oh. Bro, you just felt up your daughter. Why is she facing up? Because it's a stage play. Because you don't face... You don't face other characters. You face... <laughs> really difficult to tell. <laughs> Who could say? I mean, oh, we're just doing it again. Okay, thank you for, I guess, clearing that up. She's a time traveler. Ah, <laughs> uh, clearly. I uh, obviously. <laughs> At the moment, yes. Actually, yes, I am. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is he trying to direct his own show in context of the show? No, 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 no. Oh my god! Thanks, mom. Seriously. And how? Impossible. How would Edomar have a girlfriend? <laughs> Big doubt. <laughs> Glad we've covered that. All right, now that seems likely. Yeah, what fortune? <laughs> we don't have any money. <laughs> Oh shit, she's doing it again. This is all she knows. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you you've met them. They suck. <laughs> well, it involves time travel. Well, it involves time travel and we don't don't know if that's really a possibility. Hmm. Mhm. Mm Oh, okay. Ah, shit. Damn it, Mom, we were, we were there. We had it. The fuck does that mean? Oh, so y you're just saying we'll consider the possibilities that I want to consider. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <gasps> okay, well there is another fourth wall break, and now we have a studio audience. Wait, was that a Steamboat Willie reference? Oh, 
<laughs> oh my god. Mom's a fucking flat earther. <laughs> Do the real research. You know, not the real research. Our research. Oh my god. So we said the machine It's broken. It exploded. Oh, it's the Kodak blimp? Oh Okay. This is gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, look at look at Inumaru's face. <laughs> yeah, and why are you here? Don't you aren't you fucking shit up by being here? Oh. Okay. Classic. But doesn't your very presence here mess with history? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> okay. Well, hit me with it. It really depends on whether we believe you. Huh? Huh? <laughs> um... What? What? Oh my god, it's JoJo's. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's JoJo's reference. Isn't it? No fucking way! Your neck okay, hon? Need a chiropractor? An emergency room, maybe? <laughs> oh, okay, I think that whole sequence was 24. Full on poem. Yep. Oh, oh, she's leaving and she's completely changed color. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm, you're not leaving. It's not happening. This is very fun, but... I chose this. Uh-huh. <clears throat> All right, we're going to just keep going with this until we completely break it. Where's that wind coming from? We're inside. Okay, she's not going anywhere in slow-mo. 
she is descending through the floor in slow mo. And it's a stage play. <laughs> of course it's Kenji Koai. I didn't actually know, but it makes sense. All the music has been really good. And that last track, nobody can do groovy like that. All right, all right, all right. I still have no idea what I just watched. I'm okay with that. That was amazing. <laughs> Okay, there's a little bit of time left. I'm not sure if it's just a fade out or if there's going to be something here, but I'm going to let it play till the end. Nope. Oh. What the fuck is that? The what? The who? What? <laughs> okay. We'll start we'll start with an overall. Overall, my personal enjoyment wise, I loved this. I had a ton of fun with it. This was so it was so clear while watching it that the people creating it were enjoying themselves. And that's my favorite thing in the entire world is when is when staff are clearly having fun and playing around. And the staff for Gosenzo Sama Bon Bonsai are playing the fuck around. As far as a comedy goes, I would say this is one, but it's one that is humorous in a very weird way. It's almost like comedy made for anime nerds or animators themselves like i see the staff of this show making this for themselves you know what i mean as kind of a passion thing like I, the, the, it's in full 24 i knew it look at oh my god With the full background animation. And then there are the in-between frames. Some of the smearing. The, just the shadows on her as she falls backward. Look at the detail on, on the shadows. Like how perfect they are in each moment. The ones that go down the sides of her, of her uh, robe. And then the ones that are on the inside of the robe underneath. Like uh, on her nightgown with the robe over top. See that shadow on the inside as, th as it, like, pulls up here? Bullshit. A and it's still all 24 here. It's sort of. They're cheating it a little bit. But that whole thing is the whole flippy-dippy-doo. And then there's this whole sequence. Hyper dramatic as fuck. I, I feel like this is a clear reference to something, but I don't know what. And it's all 24 for the walk cycle. It's super smooth. It's actually really reminiscent of the walk cycle for Violet Evergarden, you know? Because of the briefcase and stuff. Okay, wh before she goes out, before she leaves the room, 
I know I just interrupted myself. I was like on a tear about how cool this was that all the, the people seemed to care. Okay, uh, she like moonwalks across the stage. Is it here? Okay, it's here. That that moment where she takes these three steps back. That. And she's speeding up as she does it, and then there's this puff of steam when she stops. Hmm. Okay, I can't find what I'm thinking of. I, I I've got something in my brain that that I it's like on the tip of my tongue now. I feel like it's an old Disney animation, maybe from a film, maybe it's not Steamboat Willie, maybe it's from like Snow White and it's a dwarf doing it. Um or some something like that. It's got that old style to it and it's in my memory. It's a character, and it's a short character that does this, that takes steps backward this way. And I feel like I remember there being a train noise built into it, like chugga, chugga, choo, right? And and the puff of smoke feels reminiscent of it, too. I really feel like there's a specific reference going on here, and I'm missing it completely. Because this is something. Something, but I don't know what. Very cartoony, very weird. And then there feels like there's a reference in the whole the whole yellow backed sequence with uh when she turns blue and gives does this whole goodbye thing. It's so like dripping with sentimentality that it feels like it's it's a reference at the expense of something else at a at some joke. But it's also on stage. Okay. The strangest thing about Gosenzo Sama Bambanzai is the meta-ness of it, the fifth wall breaking. Let's call it fifth wall breaking, because we're not really breaking the fourth wall. Breaking the fourth wall would be simple, right? You just look at the camera and go like, ha-ha, funny joke in this show we're in. That's not what we're doing. We're demonstrating that our characters are aware of their situation. Well, also not. It's so weird. The... All of the things that happen that frame this as though it's a stage, like the fact that there's an, a, a, a platform that drops below to allow a, a, a character to leave stage that way, the way that the lights turn off at the end sequence, the way that there's like in, in-house uh, live audience clapping and shit. Fucking amazing. It's so weird. It's so weird. And then, and then on top of that, of course, the, the opening sequence that we talked about before that very much feels stage play-ish, the big monologue, which feels ultra play-ish, <laughs> the off-screen voices, the halting, the waiting for cues, the playing of roles, the fact that we're, like, locked in one location for the entire episode... Because it's the one stage that we have, right? And then the, just the, the talent of the voice actors is incredible. Yomota does a really good job of delivering the same line multiple ways differently. The mom has one of the most piercing screeches that I've ever heard from a voice actress, and it's perfect for her character because she is a complete Karen. Uh, <laughs> sort of. Complete Karen. The it, it's fantastic, and then there are the weird references like the 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 rectal star, uh, which is obviously a JoJo's reference, completely like the most blatant JoJo's reference ever, but also a JoJo's reference that's hardly ever referenced. The the fact that the Joe Star family all has stars on them, right? So they all have stars on them, but they're on their butt because it's funny. <laughs> What the fuck? And then the whole reveal of it, the way that she, like, pulls down her pants and shows them her skirt, and we just, like, black out the whole frame. And it's like, it's like the glowing of the box from, um, um, uh, from Pulp Fiction. You know, it's the, the real truth. One bit of evidence that you can see and touch for yourselves. <laughs> First off, 
This face is awesome. What does it remind me of? It reminds me of a, uh, an American cartoon. Shit. Okay, this is killing me deep on the inside. This frame right here. This, this, this portion right here. Just his face. It looks exactly like something from some American cartoon. Exactly like it. I have no idea what it is. It's, it's one of those simplistic American cartoons, kind of like Rick and Morty, or the regular show, or something similar. For some reason, Fairly Odd Parents popped into my head, but that's not right. I have no idea what I'm thinking of. But it's something, and it, it's not intentional at all. It just, it is killing me because it super reminds me of it. Okay, voice acting. All around fantastic. From Main Boy, from the, the girl, from the mom. I want to know all of the cast. I want to know all of them. All right, the homie, the main boy, is Toshio Furukawa, which is a very familiar-sounding name. Oh, uh, why is that so familiar? Oh, he's Leon! He's Leon from Bullgum Crisis, as well as many other things, because I remember that Leon has a lot of other roles. He's Piccolo in Japanese. He's uh, Poplin in Ginga Eyu Densetsu, right? Right, right. Uh, where did we recently see him? He's Satots in Hunter Hunter, which is cool. Right, he's Asuma. He's Asuma Shinohara. That's why we immediately recognize him, because he's that boy. He's still that boy. And honestly, Asuma and this character share a lot of traits. So that makes a whole lot of sense. I also, I didn't realize that he played Ataru in uh, Urusei Atsura. So he worked a lot with Oshi. That makes perfect sense. Cool. Okay. Uh, Tamiko Yomota, that's the mother, is Machiko Washio. That also sounds like a familiar name. She plays Sakura in Urusei Atsura, and that's it. That's her only other role. Interesting. I guess I don't recognize that name. The father is Kenichi Ogata. No way. No way. Okay. That tracks. That tracks. Perfect father character voice. And he, he kills the role. That's awesome. Okay, and elsewhere, uh, the girl, the girl, the girl, Masako Kotsky. Ooh, oh, she's got pink as fuck hair. Girl is fly. She was a bunch of things that I'm not recognizing. She was, uh, Hilda in Ginga Eyu Densetsu. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's mom in Hajime no Ippo. Only in Rising. Okay. Maki Otani in The Rape Man. Yes. Mm. Uh, what a classic. The Rape Man. A very good show. It's not. It's really bad. Would recommend, though. It's it's hilarious. But, you know. Trigger warning. Rape. Obviously. Okay. So she played a bunch of people. That's cool. I think that all of them did really good jobs. Uh, all throughout. I wonder who did what cuts. I'm sure GK will, will help help me figure out who did what. And some other people might help uh, figure out what's available on Sakoka Buru. I have to imagine that there are some, some bigger names attached to some of these more interesting cuts. Especially the ones that jump to 24. Or are really, really expressive. All in all, there's, there's this sense of irreverence and... Uh, just having fun with this OVA that's rare in in the era, and I really dig it, and I'm really looking forward to watching the next one next week because there's no way I'm stopping here. I'm fascinated by this show. I have no idea what is happening within the context of this show. Uh, there's weird shit, and then suddenly time travel. Okay. All I can say is I am fully in. Gosenzo Sama Bon Banzai. I had no expectations going in except that it was going to be weird, and it is, but I like it. Cool. A lot of fascinating cuts, a lot of really interesting moments. All of the stuff that we talked about at the beginning is visually apparent from the outset of the episode. It's weird. It's not followable in any kind of coherent sense, at least not yet. And it is all framed in, in such a way that it's pretending to be a theatrical play. And theatrics are sort of the name of the game here. I wonder if it'll change things up in the coming episodes and play with different stylistic choices. Or whether it'll rely on this kind of, oh, we're really in a theater sort of performance setup thing going on here. 
I don't know. I don't know. But all in all, I had a really good time with this half hour of weird anime. I'm going to have another good time next week. I hope to see you there. And that's where we'll call it. Peace. Okay. Alright, well, it's kind of interesting because everything that we just talked about is kind of on display in this first scene, right? Well, I just, I just want to frame by frame this very first scene and, and see. Okay, so there's, there's some weirdly, like, interpolated frames. Um, I'm going to check the codec on this. Hold on, is this, is this interpolated? No, it's frame 24. Okay, so nothing's been done to fuck with it. Those frames are in it. Because those are weird. The, the, these you don't see very often. These, like, uh, uh, superimposition? It, it, would that be what it would call, be called? I think, I think superimposed would be the, the term for this. It's like it's been double exposed, right? This is abnormal. We don't, we don't see this in animation very frequently. So immediately, there's a new technique on display. I mean, ob obviously, it creates something of a an in-between without being an in-between, right? Yeah, wow. Okay, that's so different. They're like after images, you know? I, I don't know if I like them, but they're obviously extremely different. There's already some squashing and stretching going on. Wow. Okay. Wow. Turning into Owen Wilson over here. All right, let's continue watching. Uh, the, the hard pause. <gasps> what a cool sequence. The full background animated, uh, uh, I guess it's like a dolly zoom. Into another. Into another. As she's walking forward. And it is a dolly zoom. With, with, with the full, yeah, okay. And it's fucking creepy. And straight into the eye. Alright, and then there's this whole conversation. How long do we hold this shot? Do we cut away? We cut away from it to show the girl out there. No, we we only cut to show close-ups of their faces during the sequences where they've they've got like reverb, where it's implied that like what they're saying isn't really being said. I'm not sure. Like they're responding to each other. But then their mouths are moving. What? So, is it that that's what they mean and it's being unsaid? Being left unsaid? Or... I have no idea. Okay, we'll just continue from here and maybe we'll find out at some point what the fuck is going on in this show. So far, I really don't care. There's been enough interesting stuff happening that it doesn't really matter to me. We've got these sort of mannequin-esque character designs. Uh, the guy who I seem... He seems to be the main boy because he's got he's got a main boy sort of character design. The guy with the little ponytail thing. Um, uh, super expressive, but he's got his legs... They, they, they look like... Uh, where'd my little... Where'd my drawing figure go? Oh, it should be around somewhere. I, I don't know where I put it. I've got like one of those little little wooden uh, drawing figures somewhere. It's usually on my desk, but I don't know where I put it. Um, but that's that's what his joints look like, where his knees are. It looks like two pieces of wood with like a joint in between, right? They're just they're just the 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 shapes that you use to rough out characters in a sketch. But that's the actual character design because it's easy. That's super neat. Okay, and then there are all the little clever things like the the sound effect. Um, shattering glass for the newspaper is so off. It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, 
And then there's this really cool sequence. Okay. Let's continue. Holy shit, we're pausing. Okay, so you you know what a Dazaki frame is, right? We hit a we hit a moment in the show. We we fade the color palette to a different color and then add a painterly aesthetic. We don't really do the paint we don't really do the painterly aesthetic in this one. There would be like sketchiness over everything. You uh you know it because you've seen the Ashita no Joe picture. Um let me Google Dazaki frame. Hold on. Switchity swapity swoop. Boom. Dazaki frames, right? Frames where it becomes like painterly sketchy and and the color swap often at the end of an episode or at a pivotal moment, right? So these are the Dazaki frames, and within the context of the show, they're a a, a hard freeze frame, right? The 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 equivalent of like a freeze frame high five, um, in a, in a fucking TV movie. Okay. Characters don't act within Dazaki frames. The world freezes because they're they're not diegetic. They're not real. They're a moment for us as the observer to like pause the story. This is important. They're out of place, out of time. This is a really unique form of wor fourth wall breaking. The character here realizes, recognizes that he's in a frozen frame and takes advantage of it to feel up the girl who appears to be probably his, his like, granddaughter or something because she called him her ancestor but he begins like we let the fade out that's where we would fade to black right boom fade to black but no instead he moves <laughs> he should not be able to move he's breaking the rules but he's been breaking the rules the whole time the whole show has been breaking all of the rules what the fuck is this show a a a actual question what is going on is there a story or are we just fucking around? Because um, um, this whole sequence, this whole opening experience here with the the held camera angle and the... Oh, yeah, shit. He looks exactly... Okay, just in this one frame. Right? Right here. Oh, holy crap. He looks exactly like the protag... Or the, the main boy of, uh, of Akira. Right there, especially right there. Look at that! Look at that face. He's got it exactly. I wonder if that's intentional, just just for that one moment to be like, ha ha ha, because it is only like a year after Akira, I think, or a little while after Akira. Okay, but we just hold this shot, have them converse, and have like dialogue that isn't their dialogue, and it goes hyper dramatic into. Into like, oh, I, I understood, and that's why I had a plan as well, and did the thing, and we set up a duel, and it's way hyper dramatic and ridiculous. And then there's this shot of the actual flower, which is gorgeous. To the point where I really want to know what the hell is going on here. Especially with the shifting stuff on the top of it. How? Oh, that's how. It's all, it's all individually frame, keyframed. Ha, 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 ha. It's at 24. Whoa. Just right here. <sighs> that little ripple of, of fabric. And the opening shadow that affects all the different layers of shadow as the doors open. And then the ripple of all of the, all of the cloth ribbons at the very top all moving at 24. That's insane. That shot is actually bonkers. Okay. And then interruption. It's weird. The mother is fantastic. I love her. She's so crazy. It's it's perfect. Just beleaguered. And then, oh, there's the weird eye catch. The arrival of the girl. And then this sequence. This is the equivalent of a spotlight scene, right? You've seen this in, in the theater if you go see stage plays. I mean, I don't know if you see stage plays, but if you've ever seen a stage play, you've seen the monologue, right? Monologues happen. This is to be or not to be. Everybody else is gone. There's nobody on stage. It's just the main actor. Center stage, spotlight on, talking directly to the audience or really to themselves, to nothing. That's what our character is doing right here. He's lamenting, reminiscing, talking about his motivations, 
explaining himself and the reasons why he's about to do what he's doing. And then we've got these offstage voices from the mother telling him not to do the thing, right? Like warning him, being the voice in his ear. And he's emoting and and dramatizing and going super dramatic with it. There's an echoey reverb put on his voice that adds to the effect. Right? It's like he's speaking to an empty, empty amphitheater. There's this light echo. It's all to create this feeling like this is a portion of a stage play. And the opening sequence, the one with the two of them talking, the, the father and the son, feels like a one-act play's opening. Like, if it really does. Even up to the, the entry of the mother, it feels like that as well. Okay, so we end up with the final... The final choice to open the door. And then when we open the door, we get all of this imagery of the potential horrors that could be behind the door. Like some, some, uh, it's a nuclear silo. It's a, it, uh, I don't know what that is actually, but that's an atom. I don't know. There, there's somebody with a campfire. What the fuck? Some weird thing. I have no idea clowns and stuff but no it's just a cute girl and she calls him her ancestor and then he feels her up what okay maybe maybe we'll get to the end of this episode and it'll be like hey, hey we're all from a different world that's what's going on what are they paranoid about because because they talked about a bridge right if they if they break through they'll cross the bridge and re re, re destruction what? Okay, let's continue. This is so, so weird. I am fascinated by this show. Uh, 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 please fucking stop it. There's a term for that. We're pausing. Um, um, a stage terminology. Yeah, it's called cheating out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called cheating out. When, um... When actors in a stage play, like, consider if you've got two characters that would be facing each other conversing, they'll both face mostly toward the audience. You know that they're facing each other within the context of the play, but they'll face toward the audience because they need to project out to the audience so that they can be heard and everything. Um, and also so they can be seen and emote and stuff, right? So they'll, they'll cheat out when it would be weird to. And that's what she's doing, right? Because she's addressing the characters within the play, within the stage of the room. But she can't, because it's a stage play, so she's addressing the camera. What the fuck? And then on top of that, we've got the distance created by the mother looking through binoculars, which is super weird. Um, and then the fact that we hold, pan over, and then start on a cue. <laughs> That's so fucking bullshit meta. Okay, this is... This is at least number two, or if you consider this two in one, this is number three of weird, like, conceptual fourth wall breaks that aren't really fourth wall breaks. Like, it's not like the characters are directly addressing the audience and, and acting as though the audience exists. But they're acting in ways that demonstrate that they seem to be aware that they're either actors on a stage or within a show. Like, they're just waiting to resume their conflict until the camera pans over, hits, and then we go. And we do it again, too. I mean, kind of. It's the same sort of thing when she stands up and they just stop. And she gives her name. What the fuck? What is happening? Boom. <laughs> 